Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Pullman Adventure Club and today we're going to be doing a really cool video about a solar setup that I helped a friend do. He picked out all of his own stuff on Amazon and then I went down there just to kind of oversee his wiring and help him out with it and kind of check it out and share it with you guys. What makes this such a cool solar build is that instead of actually installing it on his RV, and this is for an RV that he put out in the desert, um, this isn't installed on the RV, it's a standalone unit that's basically done in a cabinet with a solar array and then he plugs his RV into it. He did this for a few different reasons, one of which is that he might not be keeping the travel trailer that he's currently staying in. He might either upgrade to a larger one or even build a house later on or whatever happens. And he can also maybe use this for his garage, his workshop, when he's done using it on the RV. So he didn't want to have to install it in the RV, poke a bunch of holes in the roof, run wiring everywhere. It's just a standalone unit that he plugs his RV into in a 30 amp plug. And it was the easiest installation process I've ever been a part of. And it worked out really well. His system is about 480 watts is when he purchased it. And that puts out about two kilowatt hours a day if you're getting full sun. He has 400 amp hours worth of batteries. They are AGM, so you get to use about 200 of those amp hours at to 50%. Um, he has a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And so all these things combined put into the cabinet make a very decent starting point for a solar system. And it was incredibly easy to put together this way because we weren't crawling into cabinets, drilling into walls, running wiring through the walls and all that stuff that's typically involved in an RV installation. So it's a little uh, different than what most of us in the RV community might need, but I think there's definitely a, a good application for this for a lot of people that have a little piece of property and they want to set up a standalone solar power station. And I think it's really, really cool. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. And I'm going to take you out there and kind of walk you through the process, show you all the gear and do a cost breakdown so you know how much this costs. It was very affordable and very easy to do. So let's get right into it. Now, I would love for this to be a complete walkthrough of the entire installation process, but when we went out there, it was just so windy all day. It was a dust storm nightmare for camera gear. So I really couldn't do it all. I was getting sand in all of my camera gear and all my working parts. So I tried to get as much as I could, and I will have more than enough to walk you through everything, but it's, it's not gonna be a full installation process with the video because it was just impossible that day. It was so windy. So. This is going to be the breakdown of what we're going to have here. And I will put Amazon links down below for the exact stuff that he picked up. And I'm going to tell you exactly what ended up being in the kit. And that's going to be, uh, it's by EcoWorthy for the solar panels, 480 watt kit. And it came with a 60 amp PWM charge controller. And it came with all the wiring you needed for the solar panels, uh, MC4 splitters and connectors, as well as the mounting hardware. So the solar panels and the charge controller, mounting hardware, wires, all that good stuff. And uh, he got that on Amazon for 578 bucks. So that's pretty good. And then we move down to the um, inverter, which is a WZRELB 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. These are very inexpensive inverters. I actually did a review on one of these inverters. I'll put a link up top. He hadn't seen it before, but that is what he ended up going with. So that's kind of a funny coincidence. So I do have a review of that up top 3000 watt inverter, inverter and those go for 321 on Amazon, 321 bucks. And uh, then for batteries, he went with Windy Nation 4-pack 100 amp hour AGM batteries. And for four of those 100 amp hour batteries, he paid $854 on Amazon. Um, also, we ended up getting a 30 amp female RV plug receptacle with a breaker on it so that he could just plug it into the side of the box and plug his RV into that very, very easily. And that was $58 on Amazon. So that pretty much brings our total cost up to $1,800 uh, roughly 1811 and so plus a little a few wires and some lugs and some connectors definitely a kit that's under two thousand dollars and it's putting out two kilowatt hours a day uh, which is not bad at all so that's the cost breakdown under two thousand bucks for this uh, 400 amp hour setup with 480 watts of solar and um, it's working out really well for him so the difference between installing this in the RV and what he did is basically built a cabinet. Um, 
just out of some lumber that he had laying around or at Home Depot. You can get this cheap and this might jack up your overall cost a little bit if you have to buy it all new. But a plywood cabinet made out of two by fours and two doors that go on there with a latch. Lots of caulking to kind of keep it sealed in from the weather. And uh, once we had that all built, um, we it was so easy to align all of our stuff in that cabinet. So you just have to figure out where you want everything and screw it to the back panel. And that cabinet is large enough that you can really fit as many batteries as you need to in there. You, it's really easy to expand. So the four fit in there like this. And as you can see, there's plenty of room left over to add probably double that in battery capacity. And then you could build a shelf and even add some more if you wanted to. AGM batteries don't necessarily need to be vented like lead acid batteries do. Um, however, for heat concerns, you might want to consider venting that box just so everything doesn't get too hot in there if you're in the summer. Um, so we had the four batteries set up. We chose where we wanted to install our uh, inverter up on the wall. And it is upside down because we wanted the plugs facing out the left. We installed our solar charge controller and then started to wire everything up. Um, for the solar array itself, he basically just took two by fours and built a really simple frame for all of those to sit on that are gonna be pointed, you know, in the basic southerly direction at about 45 degrees to give him pretty much yearly optimal uh, angle for where he is. Now, that wasn't all that difficult either. Again, the lumber might cost you a little bit extra. So we have the solar panels hooked up to the side. He's gonna bury those in the dirt a little bit so they don't blow over because they will catch a lot of wind and uh, make sure he's got those securely, uh, you know, concreted into the ground or at least have, you know, the posts driven really far down to protect against wind. We ran our wiring in and then basically we started, uh, I started connecting the batteries by making our battery jumper leads. For that, we used two gauge wire, which did not come with the solar kit. The solar kit comes with MC4, which is about a 12 AWG gauge wire, which is typical for solar panels. So that's what's coming into the charge controller and going down to charge the batteries. But the batteries themselves need a much bigger gauge wire going to the inverter and in between each other. So we used a two gauge battery for that. It's pretty typical for what you would find hooked up to your car battery in your car. Pretty thick stuff, two gauge wire. And that's going to his 3000 watt inverter. You may want to go a little bit bigger than that, but that's what we had on hand. So that's what we, that's what we're using. You could definitely go with like a, you know, a, a double lock, you know, one gauge bigger, maybe a three aught gauge for the maximum 3000 watts. If you're going to be pulling that consistently, but for small uses like a microwave or running the air conditioner for a little while or something like that, where you're below 3000 watts, then two gauge is absolutely fine for this particular install. And so that's what we went with. We basically got 10 foot of that, and then I cut it into strips and attached them all to the battery lugs. And we also uh, picked up some black and red electrical tape so we can make sure that we have the positive jumpers labeled red and the negative jumpers labeled negative for black, uh, just so there's no confusion down the road, uh, just as an extra precaution. So I left a little bit of wiggle room with these. They're not straight across. They do have a little bump just so they can be, you know, spaced a little bit if you want to or anything like that. But pretty short and 10 feet definitely met that bill for all of our jumpers. So once we had all of the batteries connected, we are gonna run um, uh, basically, you know, a positive and a negative to the inverter. And then you have a positive and a negative coming in from the charge controller to charge the batteries. Now this is one thing that a lot of people will miss when doing this setup is that you need to connect to the negative of your say battery number one and the positive of battery number four. So you want to go across the entire battery bank with your connections and that way all the power is not flowing through one battery and to the other battery. So that one battery is going to fail faster. It's doing a lot of work. A lot of energy is transferring through it to get to everything else. And so you need to go across your battery bank. Um, and so the way to do that with the power coming in and the power going out is that the solar panel wiring from the charge controller coming in goes to the negative of battery number one and the positive of battery number four. And then the power going out to the inverter goes from the positive of battery number one to the negative of battery number four. So they kind of crisscross ac across the entire battery bank and that way all the batteries charge at the same rate at the same time and they're all doing this 
same equal amount of uh, work moving that energy through the system and that's going to help your batteries last a little bit longer so that is a little tip for you um, and then once we had all that plugged in it was an incredibly easy setup this is probably just six hours all day we had the entire thing done um, we used a plug adapter um, that goes from his 30 amp rv cord to a 110 plug uh, just temporarily so we can kind of test out the system and you can see that here but then once he received his 30 amp power box he went ahead and installed that with a breaker and that way it was really easy and convenient to use the entire 30 amp plug on the outside and we wired that in directly with 14 gauge household ac line uh, going to the inverter which it does have a connection for where it has the neutral the hot and the um what i say uh, neutral hot and uh, ground for the inverter so we actually ran real Romex over to the 30 amp plug and that was a much better more efficient system than actually using the adapter so that was about the entire process and he, I talked to him gave him a call to see how he was liking the setup and so far he loves it he gets about 200 amp hours of usable energy from that 400 amp power bank because you don't want to take it past 50 percent and he uses that to run his furnace in the RV, his lights, a fan, uh, the refrigerator, stuff like that. He can use the microwave or a coffee maker. As far as the RV air conditioner is concerned, he has done that. He ran the RV air conditioner for like an hour or two, I believe. But he said the inverter was getting really, really hot. And um, that's probably because that's pulling, pushing a lot of power through it. And it's also probably because it's in a cabinet in the sun, which doesn't have a lot of venting. So I'm sure it's getting really hot in there. And those conditions combined uh, made it too hot to proceed. And uh, this is not enough power to be running that air conditioner, especially the rooftop air conditioner at 13,500 uh, 13, BTUs. Uh, that's that's going to drain your system really fast. But it was capable of doing it. But he would need a lot more batteries, a lot more solar, and a way to keep that inverter uh, much cooler if he was going to try and do something like that. A 5,000 BTU window unit though? Yeah, this would run that for a decent amount of time, um, but you're going to run out of power as soon as the sun goes down relatively fast. Uh, they pull about 440 watts, maybe 500 watts, and that's exactly what he has coming in. Um, so he'd need more batteries and solar for that as well. But everything else it's working really, really well for. And speaking of expansion, incredibly easy to do with this setup. The batteries are hooked up in parallel. So positive, 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 positive are all connected and negative, 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 negative on the other side are all connected. So incredibly easy to just buy some more of those batteries and hook them up and just run down the line as many as you want. So that's really, really cool. And this in the solar panels as well. He ended up getting two more 120 watt solar panels for a total of 700 watts uh, that you can see here in this picture. So we did add two more. And at that, that level of uh, solar coming in, that's gonna be about the max for his 60 amp PWM charge controller. Um, if he was getting absolute full power out of there, I think it'd be too much. Uh, but I think he's coming in right underneath that at around like 55 amps or something like that but really easy to expand. He's absolutely loving it. This is under a $2,000 system uh, that he did buy two more panels. So that's gonna add up your price, you know, however much, but very easy to expand and you can plug in power tools into that thing, anything you want, you know? So I think that's incredibly cool. Um, you can just use this for a really wide array of things and you don't, if you get a new travel trailer or whatever, you don't have to completely redo your solar. And so for some people, I think that's pretty darn neat. Again, I will put Amazon links to absolutely everything that I can possibly find that he used in the construction of this project. And I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. My name is Jim with Fulman Adventure Club. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.